Hi everyone, it's Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'll be creating this super cute shaker card for St. Patrick's Day. And after I had stamped this shamrock from the Shamrock Swirls stamp set, I had planned on running it through my scan and cut machine, but my scan and cut machine wanted to cut out all of the swirls, no matter how many times I rescanned it. And I thought about it and decided that I was going to go over tips and tricks for fussy cutting for this video. Because one of the most common things I see in a lot of the Facebook groups that I'm in are people saying that they don't fussy cut well, they don't know how to fussy cut, or they have trouble fussy cutting. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to share how I do fussy cutting it. And hopefully this will give you some tips and tricks to help you with your fussy cutting. So the first thing when it comes to fussy cutting is to go ahead and do a very rough cut around your image just to get rid of some of the excess cardstock. It will make it much easier to do the fussy cutting once you get your scissor scissors settled in to cut around your image. The next tip is you don't want to move your scissors very much at all. You want to move your cardstock. So whatever hand you hold your scissors in should stay fairly stationary. The other thing I wanted to share is on this shamrock where the shamrock, I guess their leaves, meet in the center and I've got that deep V, you'll notice that when my scissors get to the end of that V, I don't take my scissors away from the cardstock. I just turn the cardstock. And then when I go to start cutting again, I'll turn the top of my hand with the scissors more towards the top of my table just to get around that little bit of a corner then I'll straighten it back out so that my scissor blades are pretty much perpendicular with my tabletop. And finally, the last thing is you don't want to do a full cut with every single motion. You just want to do tiny little slow cuts around the areas where you're actually doing the fussy cutting. The only time you want to close the blades of the scissors all the way is if you're cutting off excess cardstock or if you're getting into a really, really tight corner on an image. And when you do get into a really tight corner, you just wanna make sure that you're using the very tip of the scissors. And of course, the key point of fussy cutting is having a good pair of detail scissors. So again, the biggest tips and tricks I have to share with fussy cutting is move your cardstock more than your scissors, take your time and move the cardstock slowly, don't do full cuts as you're cutting out your image. And when you're getting into the tight corners like I did in between the leaves of that shamrock, don't remove your scissors, leave them in place and just turn the cardstock around. You might have to adjust your scissors a little bit, but for the most part, you wanna keep your scissors in contact with the cardstock the whole time that you're doing fussy cutting. The other thing that I wanted to share today was how to alter an image a little bit. The little gnome that I used from the Gnome Gardener stamp set, his wheelbarrow is full of flowers, but because I wanted this to be a St. Patrick's Day card, I decided that I wanted to fill his wheelbarrow with shamrocks instead of flowers. So I placed the stamp in my Misty and then I used some washi tape to mask off the flowers on the stamp itself. Then I inked up the stamp, and the biggest point here is make sure you remove that washi tape before you stamp your image. And I decided that I wanted to stamp the image one more time, so again I put washi tape over the flowers on the stamp itself, inked up the stamp, made sure to remove the washi tape, and then stamped my image. I did have one spot on the very top of his wheelbarrow that I had the washi tape a little bit too low, so I just used a fine tip marker to draw that line back in. Now to get my shamrocks inside the wheelbarrow, what I did was I grabbed a trusty sticky note and just placed that right along the top of my wheelbarrow. But I made sure to place my sticky note just slightly below the top stamped line of the wheelbarrow so that my so that the when I stamped the shamrocks, they were flush with the top of the wheelbarrow. And because the little shamrock stamps are solid images, and these are also from the shamrock swirl stamp set, 
I didn't have to cut out any extra masks. I just used two shades of green ink and just stamped right over it and then removed my sticky note. And now my little gnome has shamrocks in his wheelbarrow instead. So moving right along, I wanted to make a shaker card because I really wanted to use the new This Calls for Confetti St. Patrick's Day mix, but I didn't want to have shaker bits in all of my windows, but I did want to still have some sort of texture behind those windows that didn't have shaker bits. So I decided to use the diagonal dots embossing folder. I cut a piece of white cardstock and this is 110 pound cardstock. I lightly spritzed it with water and then ran it through my Sizzix machine to emboss it. I wanted to add a little bit of color, so I just did some very light ink blending with a blending brush and a yellow ink pad. I used the Slimline Wonky Windows 1 die and cut that from white cardstock, and I put some double-sided tape on the back side of that, and then I placed a piece of acetate on top of that, and then I used my scissors to cut off the excess because I wanted to make sure that I had the acetate cover the entire back side of that die-cut piece of cardstock. Once I had the first layer of acetate down, I put my 1 8 of an inch sticky foam strips around the different windows. And for the window where I was going to add in my shaker bits, I made sure to have a tight contact with the sticky foam strips to make sure that my shaker bits didn't fall out. After I added in my little shaker bits, I added another piece of acetate on top of the sticky foam strips. And I decided to do that because I had the embossed panel underneath there. I didn't want my shaker bits to get stuck on some of those raised parts of the cardstock. After I added that second sheet of acetate, I used a liquid glue around the edge and adhered that on top of my embossed panel. And then I used liquid glue to add my shamrock and my little gnome and my tiny little shamrocks. And for the word lucky, I die cut that using the Alpha Cutie die set and I used liquid glue to adhere those in place as well. The reason that I used liquid glue to adhere all of my additional elements is to make sure that it stuck really well to the acetate. Once I had everything into place, I used liquid glue on the back side of that shaker panel and adhered that to the front of my note card. And that's it. That finishes up my video for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, we'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.